We got light. It's camera action. Yeah. So yeah, we're 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 live now. We're live. We're gonna make some ice cream today. We haven't done it yet. So I think it's important to read the safety instructions first because my dad always says safety first. So we shouldn't put the cord in any water because we could get electrocuted. Close supervision is necessary when near children. You let her supervise me, Bo. Avoid contact with moving parts. Aren't her isn't her body moving parts? Keep hands, hair, clothing, spatulas, utensils away. Because you don't want any persons to get hurt or damaged. Uh, I shouldn't read any more of this, but you should just start cooking. We're going to start cream. making some vegan ice cream? Yeah. All right. You take the instructions. Let's do it. Coming back from my injury, this subtle cat chef kitchen. Okay, so these are instructions for the ice cream machine. Let's grab the ice cream machine first. Whoa. Is it heavy? No. <laughs> it's pretty light. Let's see here. Okay, there's no water near the corn. <laughs> doesn't appear. Doesn't doesn't seem so. This is wild. This looks fun. I've never used one of these before, so this is a fun first time thing. All right, ingredient spout. That's this guy, so it looks like we're gonna add the, I'm, I'm guessing we're gonna add the ingredients in there. What, um, the bowl, this thing. Uh, I should probably wash this a little bit, maybe beforehand. I don't think we washed this yet. This came straight from, straight from New York. Hi, Bo's parents. They signed in. <laughs> There's a hello without a exclamation, so I'm yeah, assuming it's, it's your dad. Yeah, I think my mom's working out right now. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> the one, one person we told that we were doing this. We've had no preparation. We're actually still washing the tools here. This is a last minute. I think there's something in the freezer we need too, right? Yeah, there's a freezer bowl. We're going to need that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we get more people signing in. We're an hour different. We're an hour earlier, so maybe maybe we'll get something. It's Saturday. There's a whole crowd of people that we have access to now that we've never encountered before. I feel like this could get lost too. I'm not sure which of these components actually going to touch the food. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be sanitary. Bo's face doesn't look that bad, does it? Give us a look, Bo. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, I got stitches last weekend on my face. One week. One week ago, exactly to the day. This time last week, I was in the ER. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting down. Oh no, I wasn't even at the ER yet. I think we were driving around still trying to find somewhere to go. We were at urgent care. Yeah, we were at urgent care at five. We got in just before they closed to find out that they weren't gonna be able to help. <laughs> All, right. All right, we got our, this, this is the ingredients about easy lid lock, uh, mixing arm, uh, freezer bowl, base, on off switch rubber feet okay we got this recipes here are the recipes um freezing so the, the there's a bowl that's in the freezer i should say that the freezing bowl is in the freezer you'll see that in a minute we did read this slightly beforehand and you just keep the freezer bowl in the freezer always it seems just so it's always ready to go and so you can just be ready to make ice cream at any moment's notice <laughs> um, 
remove, so prepare the recipe ingredients on the pages that follow. So we have our recipes here that we're not going to be following exactly. Remove the freezer bowl from the freezer. Place mixing arm in freezer bowl. Um, and place lid on base. Press on off switch and do it. Frozen desserts or drinks will be done in 20 to 30 minutes. All right. So we're going to follow the simple vanilla ice cream recipe. Somewhat. Two cups of heavy cream chilled, one cup of whole milk chilled, three quarter cups of sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So we're gonna need three cups of liquid, a three quarter cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Do we wanna add anything else into this? Like, just straight up vanilla for this first one, or crushed graham cracker, or? I think vanilla and we can so add we toppings. Have Oreos, we could add, let's just start with vanilla today. Since this is the experiment, we'll do more later on in the future. In future your, episodes. Your dad says you're looking good. That's good. Face. Now, is it okay that they're not chilled? I saw you put one of those cans in the fridge. I did put one. Yeah, these don't need to be chilled. Okay. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's fun to throw these in the fridge. Because it said chilled. What said chilled? You read the word chilled a bunch of times. Oh. Huh. I guess I should use that. Good thing somebody's <laughs> listening. There's oat milk. Yeah, there's oat milk. But maybe just one can be chilled? Yeah, I think we'll be fine. It doesn't say a temperature. It's alright. I think it's just it's going to take more time. I to... mean, they were chilling in our cabinet. Yeah, we got one coconut milk, two coconut milk. Three. Oh, we'll see how much this does. How many cups this creates. So we're making a vegan version. Yeah, so we're using coconut milk. as cause co I love coconut vanilla. And what did I come in here for? That. Thank you. She reads my mind. It's really helpful. She knows all the things. What am I adding this to? Place ingredient in, in medium mixing bowl and combine until well blended. Then pour into freezer bowl, turn machine on, and wait for the thing to thicken. So I'm gonna start with just the mixing bowl. We're gonna actually measure because this is my first time doing this, which I think is good, because like normally I don't measure anything, but I need to know quantities for ice cream. So, we've got one cup. And this is not light coconut milk, this is straight up. Oh, look at that, two cups, just like that. Um, I need one more cup though. Yeah, we're not, we're using coconut milk. This is kind of like heavy cream, honestly. You could get coconut cream too, that's gonna be a little bit thicker. It's pretty pretty similar though. I honestly don't notice that much of a difference between it when it's the cream and the milk? Yeah, it's really hard for me to tell the difference. Do you know what they do different to create it? I think it's just how much liquid is added. Mm. Because this has it's just this is just coconut water. Sorry, coconut, water, and guar gum. And guar gum is one of those things that I feel like it's a cheater ingredient. It's just something to make it look like you have more, it's so, well, thicker than, <laughs> than it actually is. So a lot of things have guar gum, um, like hot sauces and things that you wanna be thick, but I think it's a cost saving thing people do. All right, three quarter cups of sugar. We, I think we usually like things a little bit less sweet though, so maybe we'll cut that down to a half cup. Just to, because we tend to be a little bit... Maple syrup? Yeah. I think we need to open a new one. Oh, that one. Yeah, maple syrup's definitely the way to go here. We're going to do a half cup maple syrup.
good. I'm so excited. Far. I know, just this by itself is already like a great <laughs> recipe for deliciousness. So scrape, scrape our, use my little thing. Hmm. The little rubber spatula. Yeah, it must be dirty. Or clean, but I'm done. There it is, I see it. All right, so, so far we've added three cups of coconut milk and, which was one and a half cans. And we're adding a half cup of maple syrup, real maple syrup. None of that fake stuff that's just corn syrup that's dark colored. <clears throat> Aunt Jemima? Aunt Jemima, or Log Cabin, or Lumberjack, whatever it's called. Not to call out any specific friends. Oh, sorry. But I just do. <laughs> now, a teaspoon of vanilla. I used to like Aunt Jemima like, more when I was little. But oh, I did too, like, and Log Cabin. Yeah. Those were like the good ones. And then I realized that the good one was actually what we had the whole time. Just because it's what we didn't have growing up. You know? Right. Your dad says two of his, in favorite, his favorite ingredients. Coconut and maple syrup. Mm-hmm. And vanilla. Those and three vanilla. of his, his favorite ingredients. Charlie, you must love this stuff. That is a teaspoon of vanilla. I measured everything. I'm so here. impressed. Good job. Wow. 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 You're all mature in your 30s now. Yeah. <laughs> Measuring ingredient. Yeah, that's what we do when we turn 30. I'm just going to give it a nice little stir. I mean, just this by itself, it was going to be awesome. I'm going to give it a lick, maybe. <laughs> no, I shouldn't, because maybe we'll feed this to neighbors. Pig. <laughs> Which is his name? We're not being... <laughs> okay. We have our vanilla going. And... What's in here? Our freezer bowl. This has been pre-washed already. Um, don't lick this. You can watch A Christmas Story if you want to see what happens if you lick it. <laughs> it goes like that. There's a warning on here though. Do not expose to heat, do not put in dishwasher. All right. Your dad said it looks so good and vanilla is his other favorite ingredient. Mm. Pour into freezer bowl, turn the machine on and let mix. Somebody's gonna be watching us being like, they're doing this wrong. How does it mix? <laughs> Something seems, you know, there was a warning somewhere in here about how sketchy that is. Um, place mixing, so remove, place mixing arm in freezer bowl. Arm does not fit tightly, it just rests in the center of the bowl with the circle side facing up. That looks like that's what we're doing. Place lid on the base. Oh, this is exciting. This feels secured. <laughs> and now, and then press on off switch to on position and then you add ingredients. So, this one says pour into freezer bowl, turn the machine on, and let mix. I, I'm gonna. There's two ways it. to do it? Yeah, apparently. So. sweet enough. <laughs> and now, <laughs> turn the machine on. Oh, 
Interesting. So the mixing arm appears to stay in place. While the bowl spins? That was the opposite of what I'd expect. Well... I'm gonna confirm here that that's not supposed to spin. No taste for the camera girl? I'm gonna touch. Oh yeah, you need a taste. Hang on. I wanna see if this is actually... Yeah. Well... It's so simple. Mmm. Oh, yeah, that's that's delicious. Apparently, uh, sorry, my hair's probably wild right now. I didn't really cut myself for this at all. You look perfect. That's good. Handsome as ever. We got confirmation from our parents that that's how it works. Oh, good. Thought somebody knows. Apparently, you can. mix in, like, chocolate chips if you wanted to, or you can mix in things. At the end, I believe. I want to see. Oh, in the last five to ten minutes, you can add whatever you want. Is and it timed, or we have to turn it off? Do we have to start a timer? Or just look? Yeah, uh, yeah let's put a timer on. That sounds like a good idea to keep track of time. So let's, let's give it about 20 minutes. I'm going to go 19, if it's already been a few. Do you want a demo in your bathing suit for that? What am I demoing? This is the ice cream machine. <laughs> I don't know why I would. <laughs> oh. I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah. Vegan ice cream. Vegan vanilla ice cream. Which is coconut milk, maple syrup, and vanilla. Yeah. So simple. Should we do something to fill the time, or should we just end it here and let people know? Like, should we do something for the next 20 minutes? What do you want just to do? Just continue streaming? Should we make dinner? Yeah. Just start making... Sure. ...our eggplant meatballs? Sure. Although I wanted to finish that bowl, but that's okay. You can do it. Well, I only have one hand, so I can't. No, I'll you. give you a straw. <laughs> a straw's just... <laughs> yeah, vegan meatballs. Yeah. Yeah. Vegan meatballs. And mofongo, again. The mofongo was so dang good. It's exciting. I'm excited to have some vanilla ice cream that's vegan. Vegan meatballs. store the coconut milk. In a jar. <laughs> your dad said we'll keep watching and your mom said you can play the ukulele. Oh. Yeah, some, some live music instead. Yeah, this was kind of, are you sure you want to do this or? I'm here. Should I just keep doing it? Your call, you're the camera girl. Mm -hmm. I gotta cook eventually anyways. Oh my gosh, I wish the camera could see what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Getting every last brick in there. The spatula wasn't working.
amazing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, viewers. Oh, no, don't be sorry. I'm sure they love it. Let's, have, let's see a hand for everyone that loves Autumn looking in a bowl like that. <laughs> <laughs> It is the easiest way to access the the ice cream with one hand. <laughs> eggplant meatballs. We need eggplant. I need to wash that. This I don't even measure anything for. Now, now, is the are the eggplant meatballs? Is this something kind of based off of one of your mom's recipes? This is. Yeah, this is her thing. This is her. Her, her, something she would do. I'm gonna do my own version of it though. First had egg in them. And bread cone. And... <laughs> it's very sharp. It got a little warm since it's been sitting out. It's not as good when it's warm coconut milk. Kind of like warm milk. Mm. What are we gonna need for these? Hey, this is an onion, half. It's already been prepped. We used half this morning, and I think what I'm gonna do is cook the eggplant first, so we can get like all the moisture out of it. Do I have some, some drill going on there? <laughs> <laughs> so glad that... You got it. I got this. So, this is good. I still have to eat mushy food because of my lip and teeth. Uh, for those of you that don't know, again, I got into a little skateboard. I had a skateboarding incident where my skateboard and face tried to occupy the same spot at the same time and they both got there really, really fast and it didn't really work out so good. So I had to get stitches and uh, replace one of, part of one of my teeth. Uh, so I'm on mushy foods right now. I can talk again. Um, I can smile a little bit more. You have a really cute half smile. So, uh, <laughs> um, thank you. We're gonna cook the eggplant first to get it kind of mushy. The other thing I was thinking about doing is should I just make it like a fritter? Like the squash fritters that we did? And grate it, and then just saute it in some oil. What do you think, Autumn? Should I do that, or should I make a more like a, a meatball? I think, try something new. Try something new? So we're gonna do like an eggplant frittery thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could see how like, you're, you're, I hope the ice cream machine isn't too loud. Yeah, I guess we could put that like in our bedroom or something. <laughs> we could make ice cream in the bedroom. Let us know if you can't hear us okay. And we'll readjust. Yeah, if the ice cream machine is too loud. Or if I need to just scream really loud. Your mom says she steams, I steam my cubed eggplant first. Yeah, so we're not going to do that. I don't know why I'm cutting it. <laughs> we're going to start with a grater. Those in shorts, by the way. It's crazy. It's a lovely warm day in San Diego. They said the sound is fine. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah, maybe we'll put the ice cream in that when it's done. Anyways. Anyways. I'm going to take this and grate it. I'm not going to peel the eggplant. I, we usually leave skin on all of our vegetables. Um. I've never grated an eggplant, so this is going to be interesting. It doesn't really help that I kind of already cut it. <laughs> it's 
I love eggplant though. And we did do squash fritters once before, so I'm gonna kind of, and that worked out really well. We love these zucchini fritters. It's the only way I really enjoy zucchini. Uh, like summer squash, like um, yellow and green squash. So just, is there anything immediately that you want to do different with the recipe than we do with the yellow squash for the fritters, Bo? Immediately. I want to throw green olives in here. Um, I don't think I'm going to do too much differently though. I'm going to need, I'm going to want onion for flavor and I am going to do flour to help bind it unless I think of another alternative flour. Maybe I'll do oats to bind it. Your dad asked, how's that ice cream? How's the ice cream? I'll do a pan over to it. It's got thick Oh, it's getting thicker. Yeah. It's Fun. Thanks for making me look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay over there. It's a pretty boring. Eggplant is very difficult to breathe. So we're about 10 minutes in. It's a heat exchanger. What's going on? This is already, I'm learning, very difficult to do. So, <laughs> it's a really good workout. We're just getting eggplant mush. Um, but that's actually gonna be great for the texture of the meatballs. That way, it's, they're more cohesive when it's finer ground like this. But man, this is hard to grate. It really just doesn't want to you gotta be careful too. It's very. Yeah, I'm kind of dangerous with that grater. Yeah. Sharp things. Gotta be careful. But we're making progress. I think the skin is, is kind of throwing it, making it harder to, to grate for sure. <laughs> your mom said, re remember, your food processor has a grater. Oh, yeah. She told us last time. Should we do too. that? Like, I'm already this far in. <laughs> Most people maybe don't have a food processor, so I'll just pretend I'm kind of doing it for them. <laughs> Hi, Brock! Hey, Brock. How many people we got watching right now live? We got five people. We got five people yeah. watching Catch Up Kitchen right now. Brock, he's grating some eggplants. Impromptu. And then there's ice cream going on over here. Yeah, this is just a real last minute episode here. We just kind of decided we're going to make ice cream today and just decided to kind of go live and do it. And now that we have 20 minutes to wait for the ice cream to finish, we just figured we'd make dinner now, too. And. We're doing an experiment where we're grating eggplant. <laughs> Brock said he saw the email saying you were live. That's great that it notifies you like that. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That is awesome. I'm still new to Twitch. I'm new to being able to... Yeah, you have to have the leg out <laughs> as a counterbalance. He keeps having one leg out as he's doing it's this. A, it's very it's a, comical. Because if you're like here, you tip over, so it's a, it's a counterbalance. <laughs> Endless hours of entertainment with this guy. Endless. Endless. We gotta give you guys a reason to come back. I feel like I'm a little like... I'm like a DJ. <laughs> oh. An eggplant DJ. This is just <laughs> such a. I'm so excited about this ice cream. I'm gonna chop the rest of this. I just can't take it anymore. It's like. <laughs> 
Boverse eggplant. Boverse eggplant. It's a tough. I got respect for the eggplant. It holds its own. <laughs> it really does not want to be graded. It's a vegetable that has earned my respect. <laughs> Always something that ends up on the floor. It's okay to have a little bit of coarseness mm -hmm. in our squash, anyways. It's not gonna be too bad, but I do recommend definitely using a food processor for grating eggplant if this works out, if you want to try and make this at home. Um, I still need to establish our protein for the, the evening. Mm. Right now we've got our veg and our carb identified. We've got the, those green plantains, which is our mofongo. Uh, Brock said, for those of us late to the party, how's your injury going from last week? It's, it's good. I have a new tooth. Uh, it's temporary. I get my permanent one in a couple weeks. Uh, my lip looks better than it did. I can partially smile before it really hurts <laughs> to smile. Now I can do like this half smile. Yeah, thing. his eye squints a little bit. Yeah, my eye squints a little bit. It's adorable. <laughs> um, things are moving. Things are healing. So hopefully we continue along the path of recovery just fine. This is an onion, the onion will grate good. This I've done before. It's just the eggplant that's a little bit of a tough cookie. And the reason I'm grating all this again is trying, trying to get it all as fine as possible is it's gonna help everything stick together and bind together a lot easier. If it's too big of a chunk that's in there, it, it's, it's kind of hard to, to stick together. When I grate it, it gets really liquidy and really easy to, to bind. We just need something. There's actually too much liquid usually with all this. So we need a, uh, a binding thing, something that has very little, something very dry that can absorb moisture and preferably that binds, that, that sticks together like a, like some sort of grain, like a ground, like a flower of some sort, which is dry and sticky and wet. Could add beans to that. Don't really want to do that though. I think we'll just do maybe beans separately. Seasoned. Seasoned beans separately. All right. We're just gonna do beans again uh, tonight. <coughs> We're gonna kind of take a take a break on the on the protein tonight. It's gonna be just an easy easy protein. And now timing wise, I'm just thinking about coordinating. I think I'm just gonna do one thing at a time make it easier on myself. If things are going well or taking a long time, I'll, I'll start the plantain. But I'm going to do the eggplant meatballs first. So I can always just keep those warm if they're done when they're done. And this is some olive oil I'm going to be heating up in the cast iron pan. Just putting a nice thin coat on the bottom. Now we're going to add some seasonings. We're going for Italian flavor, so here's some oregano. Nice healthy dose of oregano. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we're going to do some, uh, some green olives. If I can locate them. Soft. Soft bar. The soft bar, that's where they're hanging out. 
love me some green olives. That's looking awesome. I'm so excited! Again, for anyone that's just joining, that is some vegan vanilla ice cream. That was three cups of coconut milk, which is two cans of coconut milk. plus a half cup of maple syrup, plus one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I think that was it. So that was it. Three ingredients. And we are following the instructions on the ice cream machine for how to make it. And we have not done this before. We've never made ice cream at home before. So we're excited. And while we are making the ice cream, we're, we decided we're going to make this into a longer episode and just full out make dinner too. We're making vegan uh, eggplant meatballs. Fritters. Fritters with uh, mofongo, which is green plantains. So after 20 minutes, what do we do? Do we just decide if the consistency is how we want it? Um, until the mixture thickens. I think that's good and we could just transfer it now to the freezer and put it in the freezer. Here's our bowl. We gotta try it though, of course. So then it sits in the freezer for two hours? Um, is that what happens? sit in the freezer for however long I think we want. Let's well, see. My question is, is it ready right now or it has to do something else? Uh, that's what we gotta find out. I don't know. Oh, it's kind of like soft. It's like softer right now. That's amazing. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. It looks gotta, cool. Girlfriend has to try. That's so good. It's so good. I kind of just want to pause and just eat this right now. <laughs> um, wow. That's really, that's really good. That's incredible, actually. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We're going to start a vegan ice cream shop <laughs> in San Diego. Do you want to just lick this? Probably. <laughs> it's like when I was little and my mom would make cake with the little, like the, what's it called? The metal component that goes into the, that stirs it? The whisks? The whisks. I don't know what I'm saying, but there's two that go on at once. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, like the mixing? The mixer? Yeah. Like there's like, it pop out of the mixer. I don't know. And I'd always want to lick it. The beaters? Yes. You can see it's still pretty soft. So this is this is like soft serve right now, which is awesome. But we're gonna we're gonna freeze it and let it sit, and it'll be our post dinner dessert. It's really hard to get all the way out of here. <laughs> Camera girl's making a mess off 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 scene right now. Off scene. I have like anxiety trying to get this all out of here before it melts. Jeez. Alright, I need to get a better spatula because this is <laughs> just sticking to the spatula. So I'm going to get another one. I have to move too because there's no room over there. <laughs> I have a big white. This is what I want. Yeah, it's like straight up ice cream on the inside here. That's why it's not coming off. And it's a hot day today, so it's really... <laughs> Brock says, what a great idea for a vegan ice cream shop. Do you need investors? Yeah, you want to invest? Yeah, we Brock. We will gladly do 
imagine just like a live where the people making the ice cream are doing it right in front of you. Kind of like Cold Stone, I guess, but more better. <laughs> Much more better. Way more better. But vegan ice cream, and we'll have vegan cookies too, so people can make vegan ice cream sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Just fresh, hot baked cookies out of the oven. I'm there. Brock just sent a bunch of dollar signs. Yeah, perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> Come on out to San Diego, Brock, and we'll we'll get this started. I'm sure there's some some properties going on sale right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of office spaces coming open, or and, uh, restaurants that are looking to lease space. The world needs ice cream right now. Yes, more now than ever. And we'll do live streams of the ice cream. So it'll be a global ice cream brand. So we can do, and we can ship to anywhere in the world with our patented ice cream shipping boxes. Okay, I'm just gonna lick the rest of this before all this continues to melt. In the freezer. Boom. Now I want to taste some of this. This is too good. Mmm. This is seriously amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is... I like this better than regular vanilla ice cream. I'm not just saying that. I do too. <laughs> like... Brock says, who needs Ben and Jerry's when you have Bo and Autumn's vegan ice cream? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, I just don't want it to waste. I'll come back to the eggplant meatballs in a minute here. <laughs> We're all enjoying watching you eat it, Bo. I'm sure it's, it's delightful for everyone. I'm just gonna stick this in the freezer too. I know I'm supposed to probably wash this out, but we'll take care of that later. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow, we got some vanilla going on in our olives. It's a little bit of a bummer. I'm gonna rinse these off. Might add a off t flavor to our... Usually when I think Italy, I don't think vanilla. I'm just gonna rinse off our molds. They're still good. We just gotta give them a little bath, a little shower. Yeah, vegan vegan ice cream shop coming to San Diego. Your dad says he likes the ring on that. I think for the the vegan ice cream shop. Yeah, I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast just for some like savoriness. So there's a tablespoon. I was just gonna say there's one eggplant, half an onion. Yeah. How many olives did you whip in there? Uh, like ten olives maybe. Okay. Uh, and I came in here. I'm just gonna do my little soy sauce thing for savoriness. Not a lot of soy sauce at all. Like just a drizzle. Just for those glutamates. Because that's what adds to savoriness in food. A lot of times vegan stuff doesn't taste savory, so we're always adding the glutamates. Oh, the, I forgot to have salsa with my breakfast this morning. I just saw, I just, sorry. Just <laughs> realizing things. Oh man, oh we got rice? Mm -hmm. We have some pre-made rice, that could be, that could go into this as a binding agent. I might just use flour though, because the rice is already cooked, it has moisture. Spoon. We didn't add any salt yet, we need salt in here. What else? This is like a pinch of salt. And you can see it's all pretty loosely 
it's not binding. It's just like a chunky that pan? mess of thing. Oh yeah, that pan. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit more. It's not really binding together at all. I mean, it does a little bit, but we want it to bind a little bit more. So. Some flour to our lovely mixture. And we're gonna add about one or two tablespoons at a time and see what happens. I feel like I'm forgetting something in here, but that's all right. So we're just going with it, doing it live. Let's see, it's becoming more batter-like. Wow. It smells actually really incredible. Um, I wish you could smell it. It does smell quite good. That's actually, I think, enough binding, because right now we can, uh, maybe just a little bit more. I love that, just that sound. <laughs> Gotta make it, keep it interesting. Gotta keep people entertained. We got a small core audience here. Can't <laughs> lose them. Everyone matters here. <laughs> We're hanging on. We're hanging on. Okay, there's our meatballs. We got our oil kind of been prepped over here. I'm just gonna take a little bit and see where our oil temperature's at. Oh yeah, it's ready. So I'm just gonna compact these into little, little tiny patties. Just like that. Plop them in one at a time. Kind of smells a little bit like a Greek salad. I think that's why I like it. Yeah, it does. That's what it smells like. <clears throat> and they're, they're, they are a little loose, so I'm gonna add just a, like, another tablespoon of flour. So I'm probably coming up to three tablespoons of flour now. You don't wanna add too much flour because then we're making more of like a bread. Then, uh, Then a, a fritter, just add another tablespoon. And this is a messy thing, so don't, you know, go into this expecting to have some messy hands. Do a dance with them real fast first. That's <laughs> how you dance with plantains, in case you didn't know it's a plantain dance. <laughs> Brock wants to know if you ever use cornstarch instead of flour for a binding agent. I don't. Um, cornstarch is good because you need you could use less of it um, to like absorb more water. It makes things thicker. I think it's like one. I think it's like four times as thick. So like for stir fries, it's common with like a sauce. You add a little bit of cornstarch and it makes the sauce really nice and thick. Um, I don't, I kind of cut corn out of my diet though recently um, because I found that I was getting stomach aches um, and just through eliminating things, I was eating a lot of corn tortillas as an alternative to flour. I have some sort of fuzz. Um, and 
I, I would get stomach aches at night and I correlated, I learned that whenever I had the corn tortillas, I would have a stomach ache. So I, I kind of stopped eating corn, um, but corn starch is definitely something you can use in place of this. I think you could really use almost any type of flour. So I think you can make this gluten free if you want to with um, an alternative flour too. If you want to use rice flour or all these stuck together. What about like a nut flour? You could probably do a nut flour as well. I, I, I can't think of a reason to not do it. Again, because I don't think the gluten is really playing a role here. Gluten helps make a foam. Like when bread is a foam, it's like a, a substance filled with air. And gluten helps it become stretchy. So gluten, if you need a, a stretchy dough, that's where gluten is really helpful. And we're not really doing anything that's this stretchy here. So that's why I believe we don't need any necessarily glutinous vegetable uh, flowers. So plantains. Yes, that is olive oil in the pan. Yep, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil is pretty much the, our oil we're always cooking with. And that is because it is, I think, like one of the more, the more or less, the less, a less refined oil. And again, I, I like the idea of what works for people, what's proven to work for people as part of their diet and the Mediterranean diet. I've mentioned is this seems to be a very healthy diet in that people seem to live very long and healthy lives that eat more Mediterranean foods. So olive oil is a big part of their diet and I'm Italian. <laughs> Your mom says garbanzo bean flour could add protein. And could, yep. Brock says, this is great Brock. You remind me of Bill Nye the Science Guy meeting Bob Ross meeting Elton Brown. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love that Bill Nye got added now to the mix. Yeah, me too. That's fantastic. I need a little lab coat. I need to get a, my cat chef apron that I said I was going to sell. Gosh, yes. A little cat chef. Peeling plantains is nothing like peeling a banana. Just in case anyone wanted to know. I highly recommend plantains. They're a very like underutilized, starchy vegetable. Um, carby? Get, car very carby. This is this is the carb for our evening. And that's why I, I really like carbs. So if you've been watching this, you know I have a protein, a carb, and a veg, a vegetable with every meal that we make. Um, these, I'll come back to that in a second. I'm just looking for these to get golden brown, as they are. These look perfect. So I'm going to a cornucopia of talents, your dad cornucopia. says. Cornucopia. I like that. Man. That's a fun word for a... I need to start, I need to bring in the ukulele and start playing some music on in here. Yeah, when you have a moment. <laughs> Make it a variety show. Yes. Ooh, too bad I can't skate in here, too. You could use the little thing you made me. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Um, what was I just talking about? Carbs. Oh, the starches and the carbs. And we were just, Autumn and I were just talking about how we love potatoes and... So, so when I say carb, obviously vegetables are mostly carbohydrates as well. They're, they're mostly water. I think there's four main food molecules. Water, carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Um, and... Vegetables, I think, are usually mostly are mostly water, and then secondly, carbohydrate. Um, some vegetables have a little bit more fat, like avocados, and some have more protein. <clears throat> but when I'm cooking, I usually want an easy to digest carb. For me, I I get a lot of stomach aches from eating too many vegetables, so I'll do something like white flour or white rice or pasta, which is flour, um, but also potatoes I count in that category because they're very easy for me to digest, and um, plantains. And the thing about these is they're awesome because you just like take them out of the ground and cook them. Whereas with flour you have to 
millet and pro there's a lot of processing that goes into flour and rice, I, I believe. <laughs> I've never actually picked my own bushel of wheat, but it seems like there's a lot more involved with that in terms of refining and everything. Meanwhile, like plantain just comes straight off a tree, or it's a bush. Is it a banana bush? Plantain. Because we learned that banana is an herb. Mm -hmm. No, it's an herb. Um, I think plantain would fall in that category. Mm -hmm. So it's, I like the idea of eating less, the less processing you do to food seems to correlate to the better the food is for you. And processing includes cooking food, it's just processing is a step you take with food. I think this is important for people to know if they haven't really thought about it. And it might seem obvious, but processed, processing is just doing something to a food whatever that might be. So, I mean, washing is, is a form of processing. Um, and when we say processed foods and them not being really good for you, we're talking about food that you have to do a lot of stuff to and put a lot of energy into to make it to, to your stomach. Corn is a processed food um, because you actually can't really eat raw corn that well. You need to um, treat it with a highly alkaline substance to break it down so that it is digest so the nutrients are digestible. Um, that's what nixtamalization, I believe, is the word for like what the Mexican or like Native Americans would how they would treat corn. I think they would use ash from the fire, which is highly alkaline, and treat the soak that with the corn, and that would make it digestible for them. Um, Sugar is a highly processed ingredient because you start with one thing and then you do all this. Pro you heat and cool and refine and send, uh, like I don't know the sugar process, but soy sauce is a highly processed ingredient. There's like a whole chart in my food book about how soy sauce is made and like all the steps that are involved. And meanwhile, potatoes take out of the ground, rinse with water, and you can just boil it in a pot, and that's it. That's like pretty bare bones processing. Pretty awesome. Your dad added to his comments and said a plethora of personalities. Mm. <laughs> Try to be just one person though. <laughs> I'm not trying to be too many people at once. Being one person's hard sometimes. <laughs> I don't need to try and be too many people. Or I guess those are our a plethora of personalities. They're all kind of similar. Bill Nye and El Bill Nye and Elton Brown are kind of they they kind of got the same same thing going on. I just I need to be more. People gotta check my facts on things. I I try not to say anything that I don't know, and I try and preface everything with confirm this. But sometimes in my excitement, I might say what I what I think is true and could be wrong. So always know that I might be wrong. So question everything. Question me, I'm not a scientist. I'm just an engineer. <laughs> right now I'm not doing that either. Oh yeah, look at these. Look at that. Look at these eggplant fritters. I'm so excited. <laughs> Gonna need a weird angle here. Wow. Well, haven't even tasted these yet, but I have no idea what these are. I should taste one. They're gonna be delicious. Yeah, you think so? Absolutely. I'll give you a taste if it's good. You know they will Very, like, it's just super delicate. <laughs> I love your reaction. That looks like I, you're going to give me a so piece. good, yeah. I'm going to give it to her. Is this too hot? No. It's just right. Mmm. It's good? Mm-hmm. She's giving me the head nod. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. So that's delicious. As long as one of us thinks it's really good.
It is delicious, but as I stated earlier, I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to the food department. <laughs> Me too, I should say that as well. <laughs> We're both pretty, pretty easy with, with food. We care more about what the food is, I think, than how it actually tastes. And not that this isn't good, this is, this is good. I've made some things that aren't this good, for sure. Um, <laughs> but this is actually really extremely satisfying. Yeah, it's like really, really good. <laughs> Oh, I love when the food is delicious and just different. You know, it's nice to, vegan, eating plant-based can be, you can do so much with it. It doesn't have to be tofu every night. We're gonna do a tofu episode soon. Soon. I know we haven't done tofu yet. We actually just made tofu last night after you, not having it for a while. Your dad says he's anxious to hear about it with the green olives. Do they add flavor like yeah. caponata? Yeah. Yeah, I actually got a chunk of the olive in my bite, and it went, it was perfect with it. So good. You guys should try this. Y'all yeah, I think you I think they would really like yeah, it. Yeah, they would both love this. So this is right up there, Allie. So far, the, the hardest part was the, uh, the grating of the eggplant. Sounds like like a event. Like first we have the inauguration, then we have the grating of the eggplant. <laughs> I need some more olive oil in that pan. Bo loves this olive oil for a this particular thing. reason. Oh my gosh, the top of hand, let me add stuff in the pan before it burns, but I'll explain why this olive oil is amazing in a second. <laughs> oh, oh, careful. Dad right. says adding capers would make it closer to caponata. Yeah, I don't have any capers though. Oh yeah, capers definitely go in this. Oh, I didn't have any black pepper. You could add cracked black pepper to this and that would probably be great too. Um, I think I'm gonna take this out of here. I'm gonna have to demonstrate the olive oil. Oh, it's so fantastic. Almost done with our flour here, I mean our batter here, our fritter batter. We've been on a fritter kick. Mm -hmm. A really good way to get, I think the, this is all a good way to get kids to eat their vegetables. I think. I think it might take this stuff and be, and be soaked. It's been easy for you to chew as well. Yeah, yeah all it's of been this really is, good for just soft food. Yeah, all of this is really nice and soft and mushy. So if anyone ha also has to be on a mushy diet, I highly recommend a mushy diet over a, a liquid diet. It's much mm -hmm. better. Much better. Much better. I'm making a big mess today. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll address it. Okay, so the olive oil. Let me get my plantains going. If you didn't see the Mofongo episode, you can watch that at the YouTube channel. Um, I think it got broken into two parts. Unfortunately, that's been... We must lose the connection or something because some of our videos are getting broken into two parts. But I'm gonna do it pretty much the same way I did it last time. Brock wants to know if you freeze extra portions. It looks like you have a lot of fritters for two people. Oh no, we we we'll go through this. We'll probably finish this today. <laughs> I eat a lot of food. 
<laughs> I probably eat more food than people would think I do. Yeah. <laughs> or we just have leftovers the next day a lot. Yeah, I think it's that's usually, true. Yeah. It's usually it. We just, we just, we always have leftovers. This is going to be lunch for, we actually have a lot of leftovers in our fridge right now. Um, tomorrow might be a, a leftover episode. Maybe we can make chip witches tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh, are they all gonna fit? That would be a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. Yep, I'm burning myself. I don't want to go to the ER again. <laughs> we'll avoid that. A Christmas miracle. Christmas is only uh, six months away, oh, I think. Goodness. Five months away. We got a masher for mashing things. I want you to show them the olive oil bottle. Oh yeah, the olive oil bottle. So the reason this olive oil bottle is awesome is because it's got this little push top, this little pop top, <laughs> and it's just it, like this pops up automatically, and it's just so fun because you like launch things <laughs> with it. I love having fun in the kitchen. Wagging <laughs> our flower. It'd be fun. No fungo. No fungo. How's this looking? I store fl flour in the freezer because it just keeps better there. It stays longer, even though we, we probably go through it way faster than than it would go bad in time. Of I didn't I didn't speak English well there, so we're just gonna carry on. <laughs> It's a little lopsided. The stoves are a little too close together, so kind of hard to mm. see things. All right, next we gotta prep the garlic for our mofongo. We're gonna need. Garlic paper is the one of the most pain in the butt things. It just gets everywhere. See, it just flies around. The way I peel my garlic is I crush it while it's in the skin. And then peel it, makes it peel easier. There we go. Helps to make that little noise <laughs> when you're crushing too. Put your all into it. I gotta address that stove. A bit of smoke coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
it's really tempting to eat the crispies like right when yeah. you grab them. But remember, it's very hot, so don't don't eat them right away. Like I wanted to take that, and, but that's really hot. It's just in a really hot pan, so remember that. Remember that, everybody. Okay, these are good to start flipping. The one downside of shallow frying like this is that you gotta flip each one individually. So it can be a little time consuming. There's a lot of great smells going on right now mm -hmm. in the kitchen. In Cat Chef Kitchen. Meanwhile, I'm dreaming about that ice cream. I know, that's that's really the, the our our favorite thing. This is a this is a rich dinner, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of sautéed and fried things, and I was just mm -hmm. going to suggest we have avocado as a way to kind of lighten it up. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. But I need, I need mushy avocado being, you know, the richest mm -hmm. <laughs> vegetable or fruit. Brock says, do you guys basically use cast iron pans for everything you'd cook? Yeah. We don't have, we don't have non-cast iron pans. We have two pots that are stainless steel, but our only pans are cast iron, so we don't um, do anything that isn't that. We do have a crock pot, which we occasionally use, but I'd say it's about 98% of our cooking is done in a cast iron pan. Mm -hmm. It's getting warm in here. Mm -hmm. getting, getting sweaty. Sweaty. I grew up with my parents, all they, they always used cast iron pans as well. Yeah. They'd have a couple other ones, but I'm, I think I'm also mildly anemic, which means I have low iron. And I think this is actually helpful for me to get my iron, just a little bit more iron. So, there's a health benefit to it as well. I have low iron. We also have white rice, so we might heat some of that up with dinner too to take away from some of the richness of everything. We've already got the white rice made up. Oh no. So I'm just grating the garlic into our bowl here. So you have three, three cloves? I thought I had four. I just haven't done the fourth one yet. Okay. Four cloves to two plantains. Yeah, that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> you can... I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how much you like garlic, you could, of course, tweak that. It's not a, a right or wrong, I suppose. Might be a little excessive to do like two heads of garlic to two plantains. You might scare some people away with garlic. Mm. But if you got a vampire problem, you know, maybe that's the right thing for you to do. Bad joke. Alright, I gotta grate this quickly because those are done. Great in our this. Oh yeah, the video is titled "Making Vegan Ice Cream" because that was before we decided that we're gonna cook dinner too. So if anyone wondering what's going on, we did do the vegan ice cream. And it's in the freezer right now at the moment. And we'll come back to that. Great. 
this is traditionally, I believe, Puerto Rican. Although it might be Cuban too, but we we had it in, in Puerto Rico for the first time. I think I first heard of it on uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. I don't know if anyone knows that show. It's Guy Fieri and uh, eats a bunch of really awesome comfort food type stuff. Some ridiculous, not super healthy food, but looks really good. Hello, Hollow Squad. Hello. Welcome. All right. We have our, all right, I think it's a good point to do a little quick summary, status update on everything. So, first thing, vegan ice cream. We made that a little while ago. I think it's been in the fridge, freezer now for a little bit. That looks pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna take a spoon to it and just see what it's like. Yes, this is vegan ice cream. What did you do to, to... Make it, Bo? Uh, we used an ice cream machine, and we did... So we used an ice cream machine to make it, and the ingredients were just three cups of coconut milk, which was this stuff. Mm, 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 mm. That's <laughs> three cups of coconut milk, and half cup. I can't do a half with my half cup of <laughs> maple syrup and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Three ingredients. That was just two cans of coke. It was a can and a half of coconut milk. So all you need is a, two cans of coconut milk, but you're only using one and a half. A teaspoon of vanilla and a half cup of maple syrup. And then we make it in the ice cream machine, which is in this whole disaster zone over here. Um, and the ice cream machine does all the work actually. We need to use the ice cream machine because it's important to keep it mixing as it freezes. So we tasted it, this is it. You can see it's still a little soft, but it's really odd. Like some people actually might prefer this texture. So if you do, this is basically what it looked like straight out of the ice cream machine. I'm gonna taste it again here. It's amazing. Do you want to share it? Don't put, sh Get a different spoon. Oh, I already licked this. The, oh, the other okay, thing. never mind. So, we're not going to be sharing this one. This is just okay. ours. We'll make more. Don't worry. Okay. We're making more of this. This was a huge success. Yeah. And then Autumn gave her approval. <laughs> Camera girl. Yeah, I just want to forget that. Like, this is just. We need to make this every day. Mm hmm. Every day. Yeah. I mean, it's only a half cup of. I can't. This is too good. We're making more. Um, I'll make some special for Pig, just for Pig. Pig's our neighbor, for anyone that doesn't know. He's not out there right now. We have a neighbor named Pig. Um, that is his name. <clears throat> so that was our vegan ice cream. It took 20 minutes with the ice cream machine. Um, and that was super easy. While we were waiting, we figured we might as well turn this into just a regular Cat Chef Kitchen episode. And so we made some eggplant fritters. We ground up some eggplant. We ground up an onion and fried it with some, uh, we fried it in some olive oil with some green olives. That was also in the mixture, oregano. And these are just awesome. We added some flour to bind everything together. So it's ground eggplant, flour, and half an onion, one eggplant, half of a yellow onion, um, about three tablespoons of flour, just or regular organic white flour, uh, about 10 green olives, about a, a teaspoon or a couple teaspoons of oregano, and about a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, and a, what else? Salt? Salt. Yeah. So that's that. It's okay I touched that. It's only me and... Me and Autumn eating right now. All right, Mafongo, I gotta. I'm busy talking. I gotta mash this with my new masher tool. What is going on? All right. Now we just mash. And I should probably do this in the food processor. Actually, that would be wiser of me. So what is going? You just. 
We're just mashing this up. Your dad says he has to try that ice cream, and I know I saw that. You have a lot of viewers right now, Bo. Yeah, that's kind of wild. That you kinda... had over 300 for a while. We have 115 people tuning in right now. That's awesome. That's amazing. Welcome to Cat Chef Kitchen. That kind of just happened very suddenly. It was just a few of us here. <laughs> then all of a sudden, um, we're, 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 we've got a lot, and I'm in the middle of making mofongo, which is... <laughs> A vegan version of mofongo, which is mashed green plantains that have been fried with garlic. And I'm realizing, I think I forgot something. I think I'm forgetting, forgetting something in my recipe. And I haven't, I need to like cheat look at my recipe, but I can't. I should do this in the food processor. I might transition here. All right. Someone asked us if we have cats. We don't have any cats. We have a pet lizard that lives in our uh, yard, though. Yeah, we have no cats, but the, our, our mascot, our spirit animal for the kitchen is a cat chef. Um, we, we need cat chef to just be up here. I yeah. didn't draw him. You, I was drawing him at the beginning of every episode for a minute. He's all over the website. We cat love chef cats, kitchen. though. We do. We were not cooking any cats. Somebody asked if we were cooking cats. <laughs> That's the opposite of what we're doing. Um, we're not cooking for cats. Um, I'm sorry if you tuned in for recipes for cats. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the cat's diet is like. All right, what's going on here? I just threw a bunch of fried mashed plantains. It's all going into a food processor. And I might need to add some extra olive oil to get this to where we want it. I have vegetable stock too. Gotta decide. We have a lot of fried foods going on, which is kind of rare. Yeah. This is this is really weird. We have ice cream and fried foods. Like, <laughs> what's happening right now? Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Date day. Date day. Yeah, it's autumnized date day. I think our viewers need to see who's who's behind the camera right now. So, for everyone that wants to see, I know we have a few more extra guests today. This is our lovely camera girl, um, Autumn Love. She's, <laughs> she guest hosted our last episode. It was fantastic. And what is going on? All right. So Saturday seems to be the time to, to run this shindig. All right, let's process this. That was anticlimactic. For. We want this to kind of co get more cohesive and it's gonna bind together into something that sticks and clumps together. Mm. We need salt. I didn't add salt to this yet. What am I doing? Salt. <laughs> Not cinnamon, it is salt. We just keep it in a cinnamon container. <laughs> nice happy pinch of salt. And it's still not coming quite together as much as I want it to. So I'm going to give it a little bit more time. In the meantime, <laughs> while you're waiting... Beans? Beans. <laughs> what kind of beans do we want to have for dinner tonight? Does anyone have an opinion? Great Northern? or black. 
What beans should we make? Do we have any already made? Mm -hmm. This is the one thing we're kind of cheating on. We did a lot of scratch stuff tonight, but we're just starting with canned beans. Brock says black beans. Black beans it is. Good call. That's what I was leaning towards. Thanks, Brock. See. Oh yeah, you can see how it's clumped together now. We gotta taste that. There's so many good smells going on in here. So many I smells. wish we could send the smells through the phone. Yeah, you can see how it's like a how you can it's like a like doughy, right? It's not crumbly anymore. Mmm. Mmm. It's garlicky. Does need a little bit more salt. Mm. Just gonna quickly pulse that. And you know what? Let's add a little bit of, uh, I always like to add a little bit of soy sauce for the savoriness that I can add without adding too much soy flavor. So we're just gonna do a quick little, that's it. <laughs> that's all the soy sauce we want. We don't want it to taste too soy saucy. Cilantro, we don't have that. I'm gonna throw some money to some of these in. These are some green olives. Them in one by one or two by two. <laughs> Vegan mofongo. Vegan mofongo is what we are making, and it's just it looks good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, taste test. Hmm. It's a fun consistency. Yeah, it's really nice. It's just super simple, easy, carb. We got our carb, we got our veg. Probably gonna cut up an avocado to go with this or something. Do we have a ripe avocado? Are any of those right? May or may not have a ripe avocado. If not, we might cut up some fruit to go with this. There's also celery. I can't really do, so no, I'm- you can't do celery. I can't do crunchy right Sorry. now. Celery would be awesome in this. I'm on a, I'm on a mush diet right now. Mm, I feel I'm a face, facial, facial injury. But I'm here, I'm doing, doing cat chefs. The show must go on. We have black beans. I'm just gonna do the black beans in this pot. And I'm just gonna do it simple. We're gonna do black beans with a couple seasonings. Um, we have a lot of weird. What what flavor can go with this? We have things with um, oregano, green olives. I don't think smokiness is gonna go. I'm thinking maybe garlic, garlic powder, um, oregano, cumin might be nice. Where am I pulling these spices from? So, oregano was used in our fritters. These fritters have a more like Italian, Mediterranean vibe to them because they've got green olives, they've got oregano, there's onion. I'm just gonna taste another one here for inspiration. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very, reminds me very much of like Italian Greek food. Mm. They're so good. This is garlic beef. Talking with a mouthful. I'm just gonna do garlic and oregano, I think. And I'm gonna, there's something else that's gonna go in there. I haven't decided just yet. 
We've got our oil heating in our pan. <clears throat> we have some scrap still from the eggplant fritters. And we have a mess going on. It's mm -hmm. great. That's how you know you're having fun. You got a mess. <laughs> I know everyone's seeing me in shorts now. This is weird. Um, I don't normally wear shorts. It's a new thing for me. <laughs> Where? What am I? Okay. Is this ready? Yeah, it's ready. <laughs> oh, I know what we can add to this. Baby. I was thinking about that. Baby. I thought it meant they didn't have some Bailey's going to go with everything in here. They're fun. These are actually locally grown bay leaves, I believe, mm -hmm. from the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Love using locally grown stuff as much as possible. Um, obviously, the beans are not locally grown. Um, but we that's one area we have not had much successes in growing our own food. Anyone has any suggestions? Is there a Twitch channel for Bo gardens? did grow these. Just added some garlic to the beans. And we've added a teaspoon or two. We need to add about a teaspoon or so of oregano. And you could tweak all these teaspoon measurements. You just don't want to add like a couple tablespoons. So I, I rarely measure. Uh, I measured the ice cream because that was what, that was a new recipe. I, I usually follow recipes when I'm first learning and or trying new techniques and then I start to play. Once I have the foundation, I start to play and tweak and vary things. So all the recipes that you're seeing here, um, some of the best ones I take and I post those on catchefkitchen.com. We have a vegan cheese that's made with lentils, red lentils, that's awesome. Um, that's part of the pizza recipe for a vegan pizza. We do, we've done, we have the vegan mofongo recipe up there, which I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure I forgot something in this recipe, but we're just going, it's different today. We're not, that's not the emphasis of today. Today we're doing the eggplant fritters. Um, we have a vegan barbecue sauce that's got no added refined sugars. So a lot of what we do is really just trying to eat better, more whole foods, less processing. I know this is really random. I didn't really think it through having like eggplant and mofongo. We don't like really deep fry ever, but I think we're gonna heat up some rice. We've already made some rice. Mm. <clears throat> so that's gonna make this meal a little less rich, but that dang vanilla ice cream is so good. So that was good. why we all started here. So good. This is all side tangent. The vanilla ice cream is really the thing that, that we're excited <laughs> about. Um, Brock says, that's how you know you're having fun. It's a mess. Bo's definitely channeling Bob Ross. <laughs> and then your dad says, your black bean muffins are great. I know that my, yeah, he wants me to make my black bean. Um, I make muffins with the frosting. with like a frosting, a cream frosting on them that's made with black beans for chocolate and white beans for vanilla. Which sounds super weird, but it's actually really good. Oh, it smells so good. So awesome. Oh my gosh, this is great. I think, should I heat some of this up? Should we just have it cold? It's kind of, we have a lot of... Cold's fine. We're gonna have some cold rice today with our actual meal. This is rice. We cooked this another time. I normally don't eat rice with my hands. <laughs> Definitely not if I'm serving other people. But it's just us tonight. Just us and apparently 300 other people that were watching at one point. Down to, down to 50. Uh, are we going to have another show tomorrow night, Bo? Yeah, we're doing another show tomorrow night, Sunday night, if you want to tune in at 6 p.m. Pacific time. We don't know what we're going to make yet, but it's going to be good. Um, we take suggestions, of course. We actually, a lot of our, our meals have been from suggestions from, from people. So if you have a tool or ingredient you want to see incorporated or used, let us know. I have a vote. You have a vote. I want to see homemade tortillas. Homemade tortillas. We could do that. We could do that tomorrow. 
I like homemade tortillas. That's a fun one. Or maybe you can't even eat those. I can eat on the right side of my mouth. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get some of this plated kind of neatly now. Because right now it's kind of chaotic. And when you're cooking at home for people, you can throw some of the stuff in the, on in the onion. In the onion. Throw it in the onion while you wait. Because that will <laughs> keep it nice and warm. Throw it in the oven. Not the onion. While you wait to keep things warm. Again, I kind of do the... I get us like 90% there. The last 10%, that's all you. So presentation, I usually don't like cover in this stuff. Just how to play with food and how to cook and how to eat like fun different vegan food. You know, I'm not sorry that we have some fried foods because if this is your first time tuning in, this is some really good food here. This is like some nice good, it's not a salad. It's not like a vegan salad. It's not like a vegan soup. This is like flavorful, delicious, luxury food. This is vegan luxury that we're having right now. It smells so good. We need a smell, a smell, a, a smell apportation device. Mm. You're an engineer, you can figure it out. Yeah. So I'm just gonna transfer our mofongo. Whoa! Rookie mistake. Always take the blade out of the food processor before you start to pour. Mmm. Amazing. Again, this is mashed green plantains that were fried, lightly fried in olive oil, mashed with garlic. And we added some salt. We threw in some green olives this time just for some fun. This stuff is awesome. Um, Mofongo is usually fried up in like pork fat or something. And I believe it's Puerto Rican. Um, and it's usually served with like steak and a chimichurri sauce. That was the word I was looking for when I filmed the first episode. Mm. Um, which is just like olive oil and oregano. Um, these are ready to go. So we're gonna do a little staging right now. We're gonna make this look real nice for everyone. But I gotta clean up my table first because we got some, some stuff on the table. Those of you looking for beautiful mugs, uh, <laughs> our lovely- oh, there's a cat. Yeah, there's a cat. Cat Chef Kitchen. Um, Autumn Love is a love um, artist and makes these, aside from just doing amazing paintings, um, she makes custom love mugs with her artwork on them. The theme is love and positive messages. Um, she has a lovely painting that might be actually sold soon. We'll see about, we'll see, it's kind of in, in process. Um, that's just one of her paintings. She has a lot of paintings. But you can go to artbyautumn.com to check out her love mugs and love mission. These are our black beans, in case you forgot. Sometimes I forget what's going on. Just, just going with the flow of everything. You don't want to eat the bay leaves. Um, they're, not, they're, not edible, they're not good to eat. <clears throat> I don't know what would happen if you did, but I don't recommend it. Uh, I do leave them in there just so they, they could sit with all the flavors. And I'm going to take our rice over. Normally you keep rice up. I think I'm forgetting something. Am I? We're going to do... Oh, we've got some celery to serve with this. Well... Sure. Which I'm not... Or oh. did you want fruit with it, though? Yeah, let's have a nice little piece of fruit to go with our refreshing meal here. What else do we have in here? We got carrots, which we've done. I'm sure everyone's like, just finished the dang meal already. We got celery and... Do you want your hot sauce? Got some tofu, hot sauce. Is that like weird? Franks. Yeah, let's get some hot sauces out here. Let's get... Probably don't need it, huh? I probably don't want to add anything. Here's a bunch of celery, and then we're gonna just cut up a nice. What fruit looks good? Not a banana. We got pear, peach. No, not peach. A pear or an apple could be nice with this. Mm -hmm. Just something light with all this 
with all, with everything we've got, I think it would be a nice pairing. Huh? Pair, pair. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I don't even know when I'm clever. This is, wow, look at it in here. It's a nice disaster. It's a beautiful mess. And we have to be sure we save room for our vegan ice cream. Yeah, set, it's going to be hard. So good. And I also don't remember where things are in our kitchen. It's a recurring theme and issue. And here's our meal. We have our carb, which is rice and mofongo. We have our protein, which is some black beans and with some seasonings. We have our vegetable, which tonight was some eggplant fritters and some celery and a pear. Are you so, going to plate it? Oh yeah, I should plate this. That's just going to go there for now. <laughs> we need plates. What would this look like in the wild? <laughs> I'm very hands on with my food. We are building, we've discussed, you either build a fortress or a community. Um, we're building, we're going the fortress method today. So we're gonna have, oh, sorry, a community method today. So we have little pieces, little. Uh, things of segments of our different dishes and they all just kind of sit separately we mix them all together they gather together and are happy and can mix together happily um, you can use serving utensils for some of these things I didn't think this through all the way and let's just slice some pear here Let me make sure the pear is good. It's a good pear. <laughs> That's a good pear. I'm gonna stick it over by the rice. We're actually right in, right in there. I'm gonna make a little pear nook. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn likes that. A pear nook. I hope somebody else laughed out there. <laughs> laughed about the pear nook. All right, so this is some, so you guys are seeing, this is what vegans eat, in case you didn't know. I mean, I'm not a, a true vegan, but. You're an egan. I'm an egan, we decided, because I eat eggs. That's the only thing I go non-vegan for right now, for the past three, almost four months. Four months, I've been, I haven't had a piece of meat in four months. How do you feel? Oh, I feel great. <laughs> I actually do, I never thought I'd be able to do it. Um, and okay, that's that's it. I tasted everything on camera already. I know it's all awesome. If you want to see the original thing we were making, the vegan ice cream, you can scroll back to the beginning of this video, or uh, I'll post. I'm definitely gonna post that onto CatChefKitchen.com, and then all the videos also end up on YouTube on the Cat Chef Kitchen YouTube channel. Um, quality isn't great because we just export from Twitch, but you could see. You could follow along. You we're just you just can't participate um, and ask questions and stuff. So if there is is there any questions to ask? Are there questions? I don't know what I'm doing, but if there are no <laughs> questions. We're gonna. I think right. we want to dig in. Yeah. Cause this looks. I mean, it tastes phenomenal. Why is there rice on my mofongo? <laughs> is that the. So good. We got all different sorts of things going on. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I would be having celery too if I could eat, but I can't I have crunchy things right now. We explained why in the beginning of the video. Um, so I think that's it then. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. We actually normally do our episodes every Sunday night at six o'clock. Pacific time, uh, 
California time. I'm not sure where in the world everyone is that's watching this. Um, six o'clock Pacific time. And we do, we're, we've been doing it every week for about a month or two now. We've been pretty steady. Um, we haven't missed one yet. Autumn was our guest host last week and we don't know what we're doing tomorrow yet. And that's the whole vibe of what we do at Catch Up. We just wing it and play with food and it just doesn't happen to incorporate any meat or cheese or animal products. So that's it. Thank you all for watching and I hope to find you here again tomorrow at six o'clock. Thank <laughs> you.